In this video, we'll write the Lewis structure for Ba3P2. This is barium phosphide. Barium phosphide is an ionic compound. So let's first just write the barium atoms. We have three of those, and then our two phosphorus atoms. Since barium is a metal, phosphorus is a nonmetal, we're going to transfer electrons from the metal to the nonmetal. Barium's in group two, it has two valence electrons, that's for each barium. And then phosphorus, that's in group 15, sometimes called 5A. It has five valence electrons. So we said we had an ionic compound here that the electrons would be transferred from the metal to the nonmetal. So the barium, each barium will transfer its electrons to the phosphorus atoms. And the phosphorus, when it has eight valence electrons, that's very stable. That's an octet. So this phosphorus, it has an octet. Move these over here. And now this phosphorus, it also has an octet. So you can see why we need three barium atoms for the two phosphorus atoms. So phosphorus, it got three electrons. Electrons are negative, so it'll have a three minus ionic charge, each of these. Each barium lost two electrons. Those negative electrons, if you lose negative electrons, you become positive. Each barium, two plus. To show that the electrons were transferred from the barium to the phosphorus, we're going to put brackets around the phosphorus. You'll note that we have these positive ions here and the negative ions here with the phosphorus. Those oppositely charged particles attract. That's what forms the ionic bond for Ba3P2. Note this is what we call a formula unit. If you had solid barium phosphide, it would be a repeating pattern of this formula unit. But either way, this Lewis structure for barium phosphide, it's useful to understand how the electrons have been transferred and why we need three bariums for every two phosphorus atoms. This is Dr. B with the Lewis structure for BA3P2. Thanks for watching.